So now we have NTI systems. Are you starting? Oh, it was a little bit. Okay. Uh, now we have. What we want to do is we want to. Our, our ultimate aim is. We want to create a model for the system that we have. And what do we mean by we want to create a model? We mean that we want to find some sets of differential equations which we have uh, inputs and its derivatives and we have outputs and its derivatives on the other side so we want to find out a, a system or a model like that today we will do uh, some examples of mechanical systems uh, which we use uh, Newton laws in general uh, in order to solve it, in order to come with the differential equations and then on the next session I mean, two weeks time, uh, we will have some electrical systems, and then we will see how we can get these differential equations. And we will talk about how the S standard form of those things are. Now, uh, we can use MATLAB in general in order to solve and to simulate our, our systems, but uh, for control engineers, uh, MATLAB is cool, but we have a better, better uh, uh, system which we can use, and it is called Simulink. Now, if you have MATLAB, you may write in the comment window Simulink, and then press Enter, and the Simulink will be open. Simulink is a model-based programming. In other words, you do not write codes in order to do something you are dragging and dropping different models. It can be an integrator, it can be a game, it can be an input, it can be the scope to see the output, uh, so we can make the whole system. And we will do a few examples, I will bring the, the laptop on next sessions, and we will do a few examples on, on simulink, so we can see how we can use simulinks in general. But what, what happens is, we make a model like that, because when you have this model, you can put it in front of yourselves and easily make the model in Simonic. So you can see what is the output or, or what are the other responses that you are looking for. So let's do a few uh, mechanical examples in order to see how we can find the differential equations. So the example is translation, translational motion in such cases we use um, Newton's second law which was a summation of the forces is equal to mass multiplied by uh, acceleration and we understand that we can use this formula when the speed is relatively slow, smaller than the speed of the light. In other words, V is less than C. And we know that this means that all the real-time examples that we have around ourselves is valid in here. So we can have our cruise control easily simulated and modeled by using this formula. 
uh, we can make the cruise control to be uh, uh, simulated even much more accurately still by using this formula by adding up more forces and consider more uh, complicated scenarios. So, in order to find a model free body diagrams are used in which uh, the second law is applied. So what happens for object or objects that we have in our uh, examples, we draw a three body diagrams. Remember physics 101 or, or high school physics. We draw the three body diagrams and by using these three body diagrams, we try to make a model. Remember, make model, I say make model, you listen as differential equation. So we want to find out how we can make a differential uh, equation for the systems that we have. And as I said, uh, let's start with the cruise control of a car. Right? The equation of motion for the speed and forward motion of a car assuming that the engine imparts a forward force of UT. Uh, one important standard that we start to use it from now is this. In signal processing in DSP course, UT means unit step function. Okay? But from now on, in control engineering, which the aim of this course is, UT means any input signal. So UT does not mean the unit step signal. UT means XT in signal processing. Okay? So UT here means any input. So we have an input. external force, the forward force, uh, which is produced by, by the engine. This cause friction, which is proportional with the speed of the car that we have, with the coefficient b, so uh, we, we recruit in, it's in the opposite of the direction of the movement. And also we have this, which tells us what is the direction of movement. Now this is the forward 
force produced by the engine. We cut it forward. Why do we cut it forward? We cut it forward because it is the same direction as we decided on our x. Right? Now, what happens, okay, and then we have usually the three body diagram, this part, which we are shadowing it, it, it means this is ground. This is fixed. It is not moving part of the uh, design or model. So this is called the free body diagram of a car. And what we want to do, we want to apply the Newton's second law in order to see what is the model that we have. So, the Newton law was telling us that the summation of f is equal to m xt, which is the displacement. And what we have, we have ut plus no, minus bx dot t is equal to m x double dot t, right? We, we, we remember this. We, we, we remember these notations. Now, this is the model that we have, the differential equations, but usually when we have a differential equation, we define an S-standard, and the S-standard is this. We write the outputs that we want to calculate on the left, and the inputs at the right side of the equality. So can you tell me that what are the outputs, or what is the output, what is the input? UT is input, and output is xt. We want to calculate what is xt, the displacement, because if I know what is xt, the first drive it gives me what is the velocity, uh, and the second drive it gives me what is the acceleration, right? So I write it as m x double dot t plus b x dot t is equal to ut. And usually, uh, when we have the differential equation, we talk about the order of the differential equation. What is the order of this differential equation? Second, Second order. We look at the highest number of the derivative. And we make the coefficients of the highest order to be 1. So this means that I can write this one as x double dot t plus v over m x dot t is equal to 1 over m u t. Right? So this is the model that we have. If the variable of interest is velocity, which means vt, then I can write the above equation as v dot t plus b over m vt is equal to 1 over m ut. So we always write it in the uniform form. 
and what we want to do later we want to let's say represent this one in, in simulink so we will talk about how we can represent this one in simulink now there is another question another sample example that we want to solve and it's again a mechanical one and it is the suspension of a car you know the suspension of the car is like this we have the tire the wheel, which is in, uh, connecting to the ground, right? The wheel has, uh, is, is plastic, I mean PVC, so it has its own elasticity. So it's like there is an spring between the wheel and the ground, it looks like that. And the wheel by itself is connected to the body through the spring and the damper. So, in other words, if you want to look at the system as a car, and the ground, we have two different bodies which are interacting. So car is not directly interacting to the ground, car is interacting with the wheel, and wheel is interacting with the uh, ground, which we want to see how we can represent that one. So the next example is car suspension and it is suspension each wheel in a car suspension system has a tire, shock absorber, which we call it a, a damper in physics, and spring. And the question is that write the one dimensional vertical equation of motion for the car body and wheel. The system can be considered as So what happens is we have two masses, one is for the car, one is for the wheel. So as you can see we can have two uh, free body diagrams, one for M2, one for M1. And what happens is this is the road surface for instance we are we are having some repair on the road or we are off road so you can see that it is changing a lot so we have this function rt which means the distance from the ground which let's say i don't know center of the earth so whatever you want to it's 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 uh, let's say no change on that surface and we have the parts of the road which are changing so what we want to do is 
we want to calculate a differential equation, sets of differential equation for the motions that we have. So, what is the input and what is the output that we try to calculate? What surface is input? Yes, RT is the input. And the car, how it goes the up. The y motion t. XT, the displacement XT and YT are the outputs. Now, we understand that uh, if we write it for this free body diagram for N2, we have only Y2, which will be related to X2. To, uh, sorry, we have only YT, which is related to XT. And if we write in here, we see that xt is related to rt. In other words, the, the displacement here for yt is indirectly related to the input. Now, we have two outputs, yt and xt. And it means that we should have two sets of differential equations in order to find our, our results. So what you can do is... Um, Think about this one, uh, or let, let, let me draw the free body diagrams. We have two free body diagrams. One for M2, and one for M1. And for the S spring, S spring is uh, proportional to the displacement. In other words, we have to see what is the displacement that we have, which is Ks multiplied by yt minus 60. And the damper is proportional to the speed. In other words, we will have B multiplied by the first derivative. So if, if we do it, if we do it, this is for the spring, this is for the damper, spring, the damper, and this is the spring, which is because of the wheel that we have. And here, here, what you have to notice is. Uh, if there is no problem, it uh, means that the car and the wheel are of the same distance, right? So when we go somewhere down, let's say the spring will start to scratch. What we want to do, the spring wants to no, have no change in the size. So if we are going higher, what happens, I am trying to push this one down, push this one up. That's why that's how we have these forces. Now what we want to do is, we want to write down the uh, forces uh, the summation of the forces, the Newton's second law. And if you do it, we will get for this one this, for this one is Ks, xd minus yt. Here, this is Kw, xt minus rt. And for the damper, we have b multiplied by y dot t minus x dot t, or b x dot t minus y dot t. Now, write down the Newton's law, and then um, you will have two sets of equations, right? two sets of differential equations, and convert these two into their standard form. And on the next lecture, which means in two weeks time from now, what happens is that I will write down the equations, and then I will show you how we can model them in, in Simulink. Okay? And then we will do some examples on uh, RMC circuits, where we can find the differential equation in there. And still, we have not started to solve them. We are still talking about modeling. Uh, you have to speed up.
Do you have any question? If you have no question, this is the end of the lecture for today. And see you soon.